morning class today we will start our next lecture in business communication and the chapter is process of communication so we'll see the types of communication here it is now understandable that communication is two way process however there can be one way communication also one way communication is made only when the sender is sending and the receiver is get, getting the message however there is no feedback so uh, any kind of communication wherein there is no feedback you've been given or rather uh, somebody has been told to do something and they have not been asked for an advice for a suggestion that can be a one way communication so let's see here uh, what are some of the examples of one way communication it can be a morning newspaper you receive a newspaper you read it and that's it you cannot give a feedback sometimes we see there is a spelling mistake in a, some of the articles we cannot get a, give a feedback so that is a one way communication they are communicating to you but they do there is no feedback that can be given a billboard message we see advertising messages uh, billboard messages on every road so that is a, a one way communication from the manufacturer from the organization to us to consumers a weather report on television ingredients on a food items when you take any food item you see the ingredients what does it say they are communicating to you how this food is to be cooked so but we cannot give a feedback advertising as i said some examples of two way communication while speaking on a telephone social media marketing instant messaging so these are two way communications we speak on a telephone we speaking to someone who can talk to us who can uh, advise us who can suggest us so this is two way social media marketing twitter these days is a, a very good example of two way communication you uh, give a message and you have an instant feedback you have an instant reply from any any person anywhere in the world instant messaging like viber whatsapp these days the communication environment each of us live in an environment of signs and these signs are with us throughout the day this is known as communication environment we can easily detect these signs and our ability to detect these signs varies so what are some of the examples sign detection sensory limitations selective perception varying alertness and perception so uh, as uh, i would say that every every person is talking we are communicating we are talking so uh, if you see everybody is communicating something or the other to each one of us uh, these are this is the communication environment and uh, definitely we can detect these signs uh, uh, however uh, the signs varies it varies it can depend on us it can depend on the environment but the sign varies so let's see the first example of the communication environment which is sign detection uh, what what the sign detection means it is a sign any kind of sign while communicating uh if two people are communicating for example and uh, what what will be the communication environment i'm talking to you if there is a voice from another room that that is the communication environment if there is a vehicle going and there is that noise that is coming while we are speaking to each other that is the communication environment if a dog is barking that is the environment so there are lots of voices and noise this is called the communication environment sensory limitations okay so uh, what do we have we have sensors we have five senses in our body so this is we have sensors to uh, rather to hear it to smell it to see it we see things we hear things we smell or odor but the, these sensors our sensors have limitations what limitations do we have 
you can hear voices definitely for example there are many people sitting in a room they are talking to each other and there is something going on outside do we hear that we do not hear that there is a limitation there is a limit to our senses uh, actually things are going on at the back but we do not hear that so that is sensory limitations selective perception we hear we see we smell or anything that we want to hear we want to see uh, for example uh, I'm talking I do not like a person and that person is sitting next to me I don't want to see I don't want to wish that person what would I do I would just ignore so this is what sense selective perception means we select our, we, we see our choices whatever we like we see that whatever uh, we hate or we don't like we tend to ignore it so that is called selective perception wearing alertness and perception again uh, we're in a class we're sitting in, you're sitting in a class and uh, uh, the subject that we that is being instructed on that is being taught you are not very much interested in that so what would you do you would uh, tend to look here and there and uh, so your alertness for that particular subject is varying you're not very sure whether you want to listen to that or you know you don't want to listen so this is called varying alertness and perception again perception plays a very important role we we would see we would hear anything that we want to hear we would ignore which is not likable to us uh, if somebody is telling you something you would hear the part of the sentence that you like you may ignore the one that you don't like somebody is giving you a feedback you would like the feedback which is good but some something is bad you tend to ignore that this this is the communication environment we come to the communication process the goal of communication is to convey information we know that and the understanding of that information from one person or group to another person or group this is very important in communication if I tell you something you don't understand it so that the communication process doesn't end doesn't have any meaning this communication process is divided into three basic components a sender transmits a message through a channel to the receiver thus the sender develops an idea into a message and it is then transmitted to the other party who interprets the message and receives meaning developing a message is known as encoding and interpreting the message is referred as decoding the other important feature uh, features are the feedback cycle and the medium or channel of communication so we go back here what what exactly is in the communication process a sender a receiver this is what we know as of now however in between the sender is sending the message how does the sender send the message there must be something through which it is being sent to the receiver this is called the channel and it's an idea that the sender is developing into a message he or she has some idea in his mind and that is being transmitted to the receiver the receiver receives the message decodes it the sender encodes the sender has an idea he encodes it and sends it as a message to the receiver the receiver receives the message decodes it to his or her understanding interprets it and works towards it the other important features are the feedback cycle so feedback cycle why why do you think feedback cycle is important because sender has sent the message receiver has received it how do we know that the receiver has correctly understood it this is called this is known by the feedback so uh, this is uh, a flow chart this is a graphic representation we see the sender sender has an idea the sender encodes the idea 
into a message, sends it through a signal. What what transmission? What does transmission? It can be. Uh, this is the channel of communication. It can be written. It can be oral. It can be through an email. So these are the mediums of communication. An oral communication can be more informal because I'm talking to you. I can be informal in in my way. Rather, in, while speaking, I can be informal. However, while writing, while sending an email, you cannot be informal. You cannot write something. Yes, you can write to a friend, but while while working in an organization and writing an email, you it should be in proper format. So it's been sent through a medium to the recipient. The receiver receives it, decodes it. The receiver interprets the meaning the receiver understands the meaning of that communication that of that message that has been sent and then gives a feedback the sender may also give a feedback the receiver may also give a feedback so this is the communication process to which the sender and the receiver both work together to achieve a goal these are some of the questions here. You can work on it and uh, this is about. Thank you for watching. I'll be soon back with another lecture.